This project came in a, in a time where, unfortunately, our world is facing more and more threats uh, related to the CBRN environment. So this topic, which used to be considered low risk or very low risk and high impact, uh, it actually became uh, relatively high risk, relatively high probability, and the impact remains very high. So I believe that what we are doing, in a way, is to try and embed technologies in the training so that our military staff from NATO countries can be trained better in a more realistic manner and they can be more prepared if they have to use their skills. We have nine countries which are involved in our RTG. So we started with Italy, USA, Belgium and Austria. And then we grew up with the engagement of Latvia, Czech Republic, Finland, uh, UK and Spain. This NATO Technical Advisory Panel was put together three years ago to bring together experts from various countries to develop an extended reality training capability that could be standardized and democratized to NATO forces that were training in a CBRN environment, but to do so more cost-effectively, more uniformly, and more iteratively. Not everything makes sense in virtual. Not everything should be virtualized. So we said, let's start by looking at the training vignettes that already exist at NATO level, and let's imagine which ones of them could be beneficial if we had to create an extended reality scenario. So we selected four, one for each type of risk. So a chemical scenario, biological scenario, radiological scenario, and a nuclear scenario. What we found is that there is a significant added value in using this kind of technology for CBRN because it can enable operators to train in a safe environment without exposing them to the risks that live agent training, although very rare, can have. But also it makes sure that we have a cost-effective and efficient solution for the organizations of trainings that otherwise take place with the very high, high costs and that are not as realistic uh, as they could be. Everything is connected through this central computer. Central computer is computing what the user is seeing in the headsets. We also have sensors that are really there to localize the user and the different trackers that we put in this experience in space. The Vario XL3 is a headset that permits to track your hands and see how uh, they move inside the space. So if you move your finger, you move your hands, you move your wrist, you can see that stuff inside the virtual reality experience. And you can use it to touch virtual objects inside the, the, the scenario, inside the environment. Also in this case, with the mixed reality, you can see in a small part of your experience, you can see also your real hands to interact with real objects. We really think this can provide added value to the way that operators are trained. And this is only one side of it, because the other side of it, obviously, that we haven't explored yet, how we've done the training, but how can it be useful in actual operational settings? And that's something that we might want to look at in the future. But what we have now is something that we feel confident saying it would provide added value if integrated in the training curriculum. And that's, I think, what the end goal for us is.